You're a realtor, and um, in your business, in the course of doing your duty, what are the new things that you found? What are the new innovations in the real estate uh, market? Okay, um, first of all, um, I would like to just appreciate you guys for what you're doing and th um, thank you for this opportunity, right? And um, I would like to also explain what real estate is really i know we some of us know what it is already but it's beyond just landed property right and speaking about the innovation part of it it's even space now right now it goes beyond what we can see it's also space right and i mean air eh, the space that you can't hold or touch so um one thing i've learned or i've seen about real estate and how it has um, expanded and the innovations around it is how that we have gone into a level of exploration as humans, right? That we are now including technologies that can help and assist in making things faster and better, right? And in rich virtuality, one thing I have discovered is that the payment system and in connecting with clients, everything is made smoother and faster using technology. So I, I say that to say that the level at which we communicate with clients and in giving the documents is no longer traditional as usual. Right now, you can receive your documents via email and it is automated, it is automatic. In the sense that when you make your payment for the land purchase, so to say, you get instant receipts, you get instant um, documentation. It's no longer for it's no longer the place where you have to wait for months to get your landed properties and all of that. No, no involvement of Omonile for documentation. You no, know, all of those things for those of us that stay in Lagos. No, um, lag. So technology has really helped in fostering all of that, and um. When it comes to land survey, you no longer need, well, you still need a human to do all of that, but it doesn't as much depend on, on a human being to do the land survey. I mean, you could just go online, you could use drone, you could use AI. I'm sure some of us are aware of metaverse and all of that. It's no joke, it's here to stay, and it's being worked on progressively as we advance as humans in technology or using technology rather. Thank you. All right, Miracle, we're in the era of artificial intelligence where it's becoming of concern in every sector, you know, not just uh, real estate alone. But I would like you to talk about, since you're a player in that sector, do you see AI making any impact on that sector soon? And if that is going to happen, in what area do you think that influence might come from? Okay, first of all, I would like to say that um, as we, as you have said rightly, it is in all sectors, right? And for real estate, where it will mostly come from is for the development of an estate. It will no longer involve so much human efforts, right? For the AI, it will no longer involve human effort. And you know, grazing the land, for instance, grazing the land, um, putting in the things that are needed for the estate to be established, like um, road network, the electricity net electricity and um, water systems, and all of that that is involved in building a community. It will no longer so depend on the human effort uh, um, as it were, that you have to wait for this person to complete this level of brick or foundation to to get a building erected on a land or property, you know, it will have to right now it's already it's already begun in um development developed countries, you know, like China, where they use fabricated homes. They just use the machines to put homes together and it can be brought down in a day and it can be coupled together in about three months. You know, and some they are advancing it to be one month. So you don't have to wait for so long for your um, estate to be developed, right? 
So I think it will first start from development, the development of the estates or of the lands. Thank you. All right. So in Nigeria, how much of these innovations have we started implementing? For Nigeria, we have started implementing the fabricated homes, as I said, because we made our research and we found out that they are already here, right? And it was surprising because I thought it was far from home, but it's here and it's here to stay. And one of the things that we are going to be um, taking up as a company is that actually, that you are able to put up your building wherever you like and take it off whenever you want to. And it's quite affordable, right? And it's safe. For the environment and it's clean and it's 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 easy to maintain as well right it's not like the usual brick that we see around rephrase that question this way looking at the peculiarity of our environment you know what areas or what needs do you think the use of technology will address uh, what areas do you think technology should be deployed in order to remove i mean to reduce human interface and bring efficiency into that sector. All right, thank you. Um, I would say, environmentally speaking, it's to help the nature get safer for humans, right? Because most people are scared of technology. But the thing is, if we use it in a way to help the environment, it can actually work. I mean, look at what we are using right now, the phone. I'm communicating to you from Abuja and you are communicating to me from Lagos. And it's helping our our businesses. And so um using technology to erect um trees or plant trees and that's that's safe for the environment and um the solar system, you know, making renewable energy that will help the environment and not just depending on gasoline and all of the you know, chemicals that are harmful to the environment will also help in you know, humanity, helping humanity. Okay, so real estate is an investment that um, is, is capital intensive, so to speak. It's not just very cheap for you to come buy a property. But there are some innovations that allows crowdfunding, that allows um, some kind of uh, flexible investment. Can you talk to us about that? Okay, um, I'm glad you raised that question because that's one of the things that we are working on. And we started off as a real estate for the young working population of Nigeria, first, then Africa, then the world at large, subsequently. And uh, because we discovered that most young people would like to invest and own properties, but they do not know how to go about it because there's no bulk money stored up somewhere for them to start using to invest. I mean, they just started out their lives. And so um, we started with that mission to see that most young people own, own land and properties. And as a young girl growing up, I, I wanted to own a lot of it. <laughs> A lot of properties. So um, when I, I met my boss, um, Mr. Oluwayemi, she owned boss, he told me about the um, investment plan that, you know, you don't need to break your bank to go about that. Since it takes most likely two to five years to develop an estate, right, to develop a land, to erect a building on it, to do all of the infrastructure that is needed on a land or on a space, like I said earlier about you to in the space. You don't need to break your bank to do it. Since it takes that long to develop, you can use that amount of um, years or the duration, the period to pay up to acquire your landed property, right? So it's been broken down into months. You can pay on installment in month. In our case now, at least what we see, we do it per month. So you can pay as low as 10,000 euros to 20,000 euros per month. Right, so you don't feel it, it's just as if you're doing your normal um, electricity subscription for your house. So you just, you know, for your monthly expenses, just send it across. And like I said earlier, um, about the technology, you don't need to be, you don't need to 
be reminded or remember, say, oh, I need to do this. It's, it's automatically deducted from your account, you know, and you automatically get your receipt and all of that. So it's quite legible, easy, and sweet. And before you know it, by the end of two years, you own a lamp. Thank you. All right. For All someone right. who so wants to take up real estate as a business or as a form of career, what are the basic skills or requirements, you know, when it comes to technology and software that you think such a person needs to be abreast with in order to be, you know, to play efficiently in that sector? Okay. Um, first of all, I would like to say you should put in systems in place. By system, I mean the structures in place that would ease every transaction you are having with every client. And you should remember that you are there to serve people, you know, to own properties. You are there to serve and help people acquire these properties. So that should be your first focus. And then secondly, set up the structures that will ease every transaction because it's going to be hectic when people start rushing it and um, to, to key into the vision you have, you know. So um, just raise up good structures, get a good lawyer, get a very good lawyer, and get all of your documentations in place. Go to the right um, organizations like the Real Estate Development of Nigeria, get registered with them. Know if a land is supposed to be for real estate or multi-purpose function or agricultural functions. Don't just buy it because it's a land and then people say, oh, yeah, you can go ahead and get it. people around here. Make sure it is, make sure everything is verified under the government, by the government and the purpose for which it was originally meant for. It's not that um, maybe they were supposed to build something else there, maybe like a stadium or construct a school there for the government or put a road, a highway around uh, across there and you go and purchase and then tomorrow the government is pushing you and then yeah, people don't know what to do again. So get your facts right and correct and build good structures around. Thank right. you. Talking you about um, you. getting your facts right, a while ago you mentioned that with the new innovations in technology, you can actually do your survey using uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, does that mean you don't necessarily have to be on the ground physically conducting your survey? And if that is the case, how accurate will it be given our peculiarities? All right. So um, currently, I wouldn't say it's totally perfect. I wouldn't say you should totally depend on artificial intelligence to, to do your survey because um it is not generally accepted yet it's still it's still being tested it's still something that is is not completely worked on especially by the government so um this is just you know private private sectors they are usually forward thinkers i would say and because of that some of them have discovered this goal using AI um, and innovation to do the surveys. Still, you have to go there physically, right, to, to get your facts right. And sometimes, yeah, artificial intelligence is correct. And sometimes there are other peculiarities around it that um, would make it seem as though AI was wrong or the technology that informed you was wrong, right? So there's just a whole lot around it, but currently, you cannot fully depend on that. That's the honest truth. Still, it's helpful. Thank you. All right. We at a time where online business is the rave of the moment, we're in a digital age, where e-commerce, yes, is there, you know, it's catching up and it's becoming a big deal. Now, looking at the players in the real estate sectors, are they catching up on this? Uh, taking advantage of this a uh, situation whereby you have these players having, you know, rendering their services online. Are they taking advantage of this? And if this is happening, what are the challenges and the other side to it compared to the convention where you need to have a shop or you have a place where you can rehearse with your clients? 
right. That it has not been easy, you know, because uh, I'm in the system, right? And we as well, we do most of our businesses online. And in as much as we have a physical office, um, you don't often see us there as much except by appointment because we have other businesses we are handling, we have other places we need to be at physically and there's a whole lot we are working on um, at the back end. So the thing is when you establish your integrity and make people believe you, make your audience or your clients believe you, um, it wouldn't be much of an issue but starting off, starting off right and being a big player before you get to being a big player you must have been a small player so starting off initially you must get to the level where they have come to trust you they have come to um they have come to a place where they've tested and say okay this person is not running away with her money this person is actually doing the work there is evidence on sites or off sites that okay you're actually doing the work and the innovations you are working with is actually true is actually true rather and and there's no lie in what you are doing when they come to terms with that um they will agree with the online business and for us we are a young company right and people have doubted i wouldn't say people uh, they've, they've been doubt and they'll be like oh how do i trust this process how do i and for us like i said earlier get a good lawyer you know when you get a good lawyer and there is a, there is there is this notion with especially with us as African that it's what we see that we believe. So when they see that everything you are doing is legal and there is no shady business behind that, they come to trust you and even with the online when they see the swiftness of your business, how quickly you respond to their messages, how quickly you respond to their complaints and documentation and all of that, how smooth your processes are, they'll come to believe that, right? And for the big players, um, currently, I think they're adapting it bit by bit. I, I don't know for other people, but I'm seeing that they're adapt, adapting it bit by some of our competitors. I see that they're adapting it. And um, I think with time, with time, everyone will come to agree with it. Everyone is going for land right now, um, or oh, I assume almost everyone is going to secure a land, own a land. But you agree with me that there will come a time in the future where land will not be available for everybody. So looking ahead, what innovations have the real estate uh, sector come up with to tackle that challenge of uh, less availability of land for people? Who want to have homes or own a building all right initially before i started i was like real estate is no longer land and the houses we see it's actually um, inclusive of space right so space is included in real estate and for example i don't know about the building you're in but let me assume if it's a story building or more so the space after the when where yeah, the building stops, there can be another erected um apartment, right? And that has a space and people can live up there. And um I don't think we can exhaust space, right? No matter how much we keep going and going. I, I think there's a level where you can stop, but I um we can maximize what we have really. We can maximize the space we have and um earlier I, I i stated the fabricated home where you can you know erect and detach whenever you want so i think that will help really for people that when the land is exhausted which i don't think it will be because there's a whole lot that we are yet to explore i mean in lagos i know that um the water is being filled up and homes are erected hotels big mansions are erected on water well, somewhere that was once water filled and it's standing very well, like it's standing on the rock. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, let's even look at that. Uh, erecting buildings in the water, filling up the, the, the water to uh, have buildings on it. 
are we doing it the way we should do to avoid future consequences? And even on the space you talked about, for instance, if this is a story building or a two-story building and someone pays for the space above it to have buildings erected. Now, I'm not an engineer, but I'm looking at it uh, from a layman point of view. Shouldn't the foundation of the building uh, but based on what structure that's going to stand on it. So is that already foreplanned to accommodate as, mon as many stories that will come on it, whether they are in existence right now or later in the future? Are those put into consideration? Yeah, um, for us, I can only speak um, for where I'm coming from and what I see that we have planned towards or planning towards. That's why I, I, I say that because our plan is actually to subsequently erect a bow, right, to accommodate others um, going forward. So I don't know about the others, but for us, we have that in plan. Yeah, we, we see, I mean, we think forward and then we are working on that. So once it's exhausted, to look for another place to do our land banking and acquire more land. And uh, yes, for your first question, you asked um, if that's the right thing to do, building, filling water on, filling water and then building on, if that's the right thing to do. Well, um, if, since it's working, I mean, you've seen evidence that so far, the buildings are, are yet to collapse, and I don't think it's going to collapse anytime soon. So it's working. So, I mean, we can go with that. If it's not the right, if it's the right thing to do, I'm asking: Are we doing it rightly? Because we sometimes see the environmental challenge, particularly in uh, during rainy season when there is flooding issue, because water must find its level. So the question is: Are we doing it rightly? Are there technologies that we also need to embrace in order to have that happen? Yeah. Um, I would. I would say we are doing it rightly completely because nature is nature and then we cannot force some things. We, we have to allow water pass through where water wants to pass through. And subsequently, if it wants to do worse and it's going when when it's too full to contain and all of that. But I think there are measures taken to channel the water in this case, right? To where it will pass safely and not disturb the building. And I think there are measures put in place for it not to affect the erected building going forward. Now let's look at what an investor needs to do to take advantage of the emerging technology and innovations happening in that sector to remain competitive and very efficient in the business. So what what, what what should an investor do when it comes to technology, taking advantage of it to remain competitive? All right. Um, we are humans and we are very intelligent. They call it artificial intelligence. We are the ones that put it in place just so that work can be easy for us and we can have more time to do other things, emphasis on time, to do other things, right, and get better. And um, in our generation, we want to get things fast. We want to get things done quickly. I don't know where we are rushing to, but I would say it's just the era on us. So as an investor, you need to think forward. What do people want? And I think in our time, you just have to create problems where there is no. Create a problem and create the solution. and People would want to get it. That's how to think as an investor in this age and time. Think of the problem, think of the solution, and you stay ahead of others, of your other computers. And um, you have solution. When you have solution to this, there's a demand for it. And I mean, to keep you abreast. Okay, so uh, I'm going to ask you this uh, finally. When an investor wants to acquire property, there's an uh, inspection, but we talked about uh, people being busy right now, people not having time. Are there innovations that help the investor see what they want to get 
uh, and make options from the different uh, uh, properties available, maybe virtually, and can they be trusted? Yes, um, there are tools that can be used to do your inspection. Virtual reality um, can help with that. There's a lens, the VR lens that you can just put on and watch. It will, it will appear as though you are right here. They started um, implementing it in the metaverse. But I think some companies have started using that. I wouldn't want to mention names. But um, yeah, you can actually go on virtual inspection and it can be trusted because I mean, first off, it's a human being that took the, for instance, aerial view or side view or left view or middle view of the place that you want to purchase. And they're all, they can be, you know, put together, compiled and put in a chip, inserted in the VR lens, and then you can watch it from the comfort of wherever you are and decide what it is that you want to use for or purchase rather for your investments. 